بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we'll just continue from where we left off brothers, inshallah. So we arrived at this chapter, Al-Hijratu, Al-Hijratu ila al-Madina. So the uh, migration to Medina, uh, as we're all familiar with. So the Sheikh is, is going to go through this chapter, will inshallah translate it. So it begins with, he says, Hafiz Allah says, Al-Hijratu ila al-Madina wa ba'daha wa ba'daha umira bil-Hijrati ila al-Madina So the title of this chapter is the migration to al-Madina al-Madina Nabawiya the city of Medina So then the Shaykh before we move on point uh, 62 we're on point 62 down here so then the Shaykh, he says, Qawluhu rahimahullah, quoting the original author, uh, rahimahullah, he says, Wa ba'daha umra bil hijrati ila al madinati. So after the previous chapter that we read, so after that particular period in Mecca, and what ensued then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Muslims with Hijra. Al Hijra to the city of Medina. So then the Shaykh he says in this paragraph, he says, Lam Mashtadda Ada Quraish Wazada Sharuhum Bisaddi and Sabili Lahi Wa Madaya Katul Muslimin Wa Ta'dib Min Manlay Salahu Jamaatun Tahmihi uh min Mustadi fi al Muslimin أذن الله سبحانه وتعالى للمسلمين بالهجرة إلى الحبشة الهجرة الأولى لأن فيها ملكا لا يظلم لا يظلم أحد عنده وكان نصرانيا ولكنه كان عادلا هاجر من هاجر منهم نفر كثير فلما علمت قريش بهجرتهم إلى الحبشة أرسلوا في طلبهم مندوبين من دهات قريش أحدهما عمر بن العاص ومعهم الهداية للنجاشي وقالوا إن هؤلاء فرونا أو فروا منا وهم أقاربنا نريد أن يرجعوا وإنهم أشرار لا يفسدون في لا يفسدون في في بلدك إلى آخره. so we'll just stop there at the end of that paragraph. so the sheikh mentions here that when the severity of the harms from the Quraysh increased, when when the harms from the Quraysh uh, the Quraysh increased upon the Muslims, and when their uh, blocking the people from Al Islam increased, and their pressurizing and uh, bullying and everything else that comes with it when all of this increased and the harm and the punishment and all this that increased especially for the Muslims who didn't have um, uh, um, you know one part of strong groups strong um, um, uh, tribes who were able to protect them then those Muslims the the harm and everything increased upon them they were being tortured you know, killed, tortured, beaten, uh, and everything else that you can think of. This was happening with the Muslims. Why? Just because uh, they were pronouncing that none has the worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was their crime. And on reality, it's not a crime, is it? It's a correct thing, as we know. So just because of that, they were killed. Many of them were killed. 
uh, many were killed, many were tortured, harmed, and everything else I can think of was what happened to them. Um, and when this occurred, then Allah uh, gave permission to the Muslims to uh, make hijrah. And so the Sheikh mentions the first hijrah. The first hijrah that occurred, as we all know, is the hijrah to Al Habasha, right? Uh, a, a Christian land. I think around the Ethiopian, Ethiopia, that, that's all there in Africa. And the, 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 the first group of Muslims, they traveled there. And many small groups from the Muslims, they traveled there uh, for safety. And what was the reason? Because the leader, even though he was Christian, as we know, he was a Christian leader, but he was a just leader. He was a just person. And because of that, they made the first hijrah there. So the first hijrah was made there. And the, the, the leader was just and didn't oppress anybody. So when Quraysh, when the Quraysh, when they found out, when they learned that the Muslims were making uh, uh, the, the weaker of the Muslims on the, and the Muslims in general, they were making this hijrah to Al-Habasha. Um, yeah, so uh, the, sorry about that. Yeah, so when they were making the hijrah, when they learned, the Quraysh learned about this happening, they sent, uh, they sent um, delegates or representatives from the more the the, the, the smartest ones, from the smartest, uh, smartest and cunning and clever um, the delegates. One of them being Amr ibn al As, and with these two delegates, uh, they brought with them um, uh, gifts. To Najashi. Najashi was a Christian leader, yeah, uh, of Al Habasha, and they said, "Oh, indeed, these these ones, these you know, the Muslims who went, these ones are from our close relatives, are from our people and our relatives and relations, and they and they they fled from us. We want them that they uh, return, uh, and indeed they are evil, and you know we don't want them to, you know." Uh, corrupt your land, etc., etc. This is what the Sheikh mentions here. So we move on to the next paragraph. Then the Sheikh he says, وَعَطَوْهُمْ هِدَايَ أَلَّتِي مَعْهُمْ لِيَغُرُّوهُ وَلَكِنَّهُ رَحْمُ اللَّهِ اسْتَدْعَى الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَسَمِعَ مِنْهُمْ وَخَيْرُهُمْ وَخَيْرُمْ فَاخْتَارُوا الْبَقَاءَ أو وَخَيْرَهُمْ فَاخْتَارُوا الْبَقَاءَ فِي الْحَبَشَ فَرَجَ الْمَنْدُوبَانِ خَائِبِينَ وَبَقِيَ مِنْ مَنْ بَقِيَ فِي الْحَبَشَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ So then they gave gifts. They gave. They had gifts with them. They gave gifts to the leader, uh, Al-Najashi, uh, uh, to try and uh, mislead him and trick him uh, into returning uh, the muhajirin that went to Al-Habasha. But... May Allah have mercy upon him. He he requested that he hear from the muhajirin and listen to what they've got to say as well. So he wanted to listen to both sides. He heard what these guys had to say, what who, who came. He saw the the people from Quraysh at that time. Uh, one of them being Amr ibn al-As, when when uh, when they came before he became Muslim, when he came and he listened to their side. Now he wanted to listen to the people who travelled and emigrated to his land. He wanted to listen to them, the Muhajirin. And after listening to them, uh, and after listening to them and what they had to say, and then they chose to remain and he allowed them to remain in his land. So then the delegates, the two delegates, they went, uh, they failed and they returned back to Mecca, as we know in the story. And so whoever remained, remained from whoever wanted to remain from the Muhajirin in Al Habasha. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, "Thumma in Allah manna al Najashi fa aslama wa hasuna Islamuhu, falamma tawufi sallallahu alaihi rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sabu wa sabu salat al ghaib, fakana fi hijratihim ilayhi khair lahu aydan." So in this paragraph, the Shaykh says, so then uh, Allah, you know, guided a Najashi to Islam 
and because of this success and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him, he accepted Islam and he became a Muslim and you know his Islam was upon his son, good, good, right? And um, so when uh, Najashi passed away, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and his companions, they, they, they read a, a type of janaza called Salat al-Ghaib. So where uh, you pray the janaza prayer uh, without uh, the actual person who died being there is done in absentia, yeah, absence of the person. Because it, so so in so in the Muslims hijrah there was khair uh, for uh, Najashi, khair that eventually led him to accepting Islam. Um, so this is what the Sheikh says here in his paragraph. Then the Sheikh continues and he says, "Thumma." لقي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نفرا من الأنصار في منا في موسم الحج وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعرض نفسه على على القبائل في موسم الحج يذهب إلى منازل العرب في منا ويدعوهم إلى الله وصادف أن أن لقي أناس من الأنصار فدعاهم إلى الله فأرض عليهم ما عنده فقبلوا من الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم دعوته وبايعوا على الإسلام ورجعوا إلى قومهم من موسم الحج فدعوهم إلى الله عز وجل فوافى في الموسم الذي بعده أكثر من الموسم الأول جاء ناس من الأنصار وبايعوا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بيعة العقبة الثانية أي عند جمرة العقبة بايعوه على الإسلام وعلى أن يناصروه إذا هاجر إليهم وأن يحموا وأن يحموه مما يحمون منه أنفسهم وأولادهم. So then in this paragraph, the Sheikh mentions that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he met a group of the Ansar uh, in Mina, in in a place called Mina as we all are aware of Mina, in the Muslim of Hajj in the season of Hajj. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he was calling the people towards Islam. You know, the different tribes that came for Hajj, calling them. And he would go to their sitting places, their their, their tents, etc. Wherever they were, and he would call them to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, call them to Islam. And so, he came across a group of the Ansar. And he, you know, called them to Al-Islam. And they accepted what he had to say when the Prophet ﷺ explained to them Islam and what is about, etc., and called them to that, and they accepted it. They accepted his call, and then they pledged allegiance to him with Islam. They pledged the lead. They took the oath of allegiance, the pledge of allegiance here, yeah, the bayah, and they returned to their people. You know, they returned to Medina to their people. During that, uh, 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 th sorry, then they returned to the people during the uh, during Muslim of Hajj in the season of Hajj, and you know they obviously called their people as well to Allah. They were they started calling their own people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, re uh, reiterating the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, in the forthcoming um, uh, season, there was the Bayatul Akba Athaniya. There was a second pledge of allegiance from the people of Medina, yeah, from the two tribes, uh, from uh, uh, who are called Ansar, and the two tribes that are known as Ansar are Al Al uh, Al Aus wal Khazraj, yeah, Al Aus wal Khazraj, two tribes from Medina um, that are known as Ansar because they helped the Muslims, and Al, -Al, -Al Ansar means helpers, you know, helping uh, or Nasr. Uh, so this is what happened, and this is what, when it took the uh, the second uh, pledge of allegiance took place uh, um, uh, uh, in a place called Jamratul Aqaba, and that's why it's called Al Bayatul Aqaba. So that was the Bayatul Aqaba Athania, the second pledge of allegiance, right? And they said they agreed, and they said that they would protect the Muslims just like how they protect themselves and their children. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, فَعِنْدَ ذَلِكَ أَيْ بَعْدَ هَذِي الْبَيْئَةِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ أَمْرُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي مَكَّةِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِالْهِجْرَةِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ وَهَاجْرًا مَنْ هَاجْرًا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ وَبَقِيَ الرَّسُولُ وَبَعْدَ أَصْحَابِهِ 
ثم إن الله علينا لنبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم بالهجرة فلما علمت قريش بهجرة الصحابة إلى المدينة وعلموا بالبيعة التي حصلت بينه وبين الأنصار خافوا أن يلحق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بأصحابه في المدينة ويكون له قوة ويكون له قوة أو وتكون له قوة وتكون لهم منعة في هذه الليلة في هذه الليلة التي أراد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يخرج إلى الهجرة جاءوا وحاصروا البيت ووقفوا عند الباب ما هم أسلحتهم يريدون الفتك برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأخبر الله نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم فأمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليا أن ينام على فراشه حتى يراه المشركون ويظنون أنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فنام علي رضي الله عنه على فراش رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فتغطى بغطاء الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فصار المشركون ينتظرون خروجه على أنه الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وخرج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من بينهم وهم لا يشرون so let's just stop down that paragraph so then the sheikh says so with that i.e. Uh, with the uh, a pledge of allegiance this blessed pledge of allegiance the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded uh, was commanded and <coughs> uh, he commanded whoever was in Mecca from the muslimin with emigration to migrate to al Madina. and so the pe- whoever uh, so from the people they they from the muslims they migrated so a lot of muslims at that time they they started migrating to medina but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and some of the sahaba remained then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, uh, gave him permission of hijra and so he also uh, uh, went and made this hijra after Allah's permission. But before he made Hijra, what happened was, as we all are aware of the story, that the Quraysh, when they learned uh, about the uh, Hijra of the, the remainder of the, uh, the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu to Medina, they, they, knew, they knew and they also knew about this pledge of allegiance that, that they obtained from uh, uh, the Al-Ansar from Medina, the two tribes from Medina. They feared, they became scared that the Prophet ﷺ would eventually meet up with them and make that migration to al Madina uh, with his companions, and that there would be that he would that there would be power, that they would have strength. The Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims, they would gain strength and become powerful, and that they would have this power and might. Yeah. So in that night. The Prophet Sallallahu w- wanted to exit his uh, uh, his uh, place of living and make the emigration to Medina. However, a group of the Quraysh or the uh, the Quraysh they came and they encircled the house, they surrounded the house, and they st- and they stopped in front of the door, and they had their weapons. And they were ready to obviously kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They wanted to stop him. They wanted they wanted to annihilate him, basically. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala informed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and command and the and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he commanded Ali. He commanded Ali radiAllahu Anhu that he sleeps on his bed up until the Mushrikun, the polytheists from the Quraysh that they see him and that they think that it's a prophet وسلم, but it wasn't so uh, Ali radiallahu anhu he slept on the uh, on the bed of the prophet sallallahu and he wrapped it, he wrapped his uh, you know um, he wrapped himself with uh, the uh, uh, let's say the duvet or a cloth that he wrapped himself with when he sleep uh, around himself um, and, and that was the uh, uh, the prophet's uh, uh, bed and the mushrikun they were waiting outside they were waiting for the Prophet Sallallahu to exit however the Prophet Sallallahu exited 
while they were there, they didn't realize that the Prophet Prophet had left the ho- left his home and uh, left the area. They didn't realize. So then the Sheikh goes on to say in the next paragraph, he says, "Am Allahu basairahum anhu wa khada turaban wa dar wa ala ruusihim wa kharaja min bainihim wa dhaba ila Abi Bakr radhiyallahu anhu wa kharaja fa dhaba ila Ghar Thawr fahtafian fihi." ثلاثة أيام فاختفيا فيه ثلاثة أيام وقريش تطلب من الناس العثور عليه بأي وسيلة حيا أو ميتا فلما يأسوا من العثور عليه بعد البحث والتنقيب أغروا بالجوائز من 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 يأتي به صلى الله عليه وسلم حيا أو ميتا فلما أي سو خرج أوكي سو الشيخ سيدي فلما أي سو خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وصاحبه من الغار وركبوا الرواحل وذهبوا إلى المدينة. so in this paragraph <coughs> the sheikh mentions that Allah made those uh, those people from the Quraysh the Mushrikun blind they weren't able able to see the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he left whilst they were there they didn't realize he left and he made his way to uh ghar thawr as we know ghar thawr and he met uh abu bakr there and they and they hid there for three days as we know the story they hid there for three days uh meanwhile the Quraysh were, were giving prizes out to whoever could find and track the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, whether uh, in a state of being dead or alive they didn't care they just wanted to get hold of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but then they failed and in the end the sheikh says here that they failed and then from there after that time period uh, uh, abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they they came out of the cave and they made their way to al madina so then so that's the story the background as we know that's the background of <clears throat> of uh, the hijra uh, uh, both of the hijras the hijra to uh, al habasha and the and the hijra to al madina which was the final hijra at the time so every muslim all the muslims made their way to al madina at that time so now the sheikh is going to explain uh, some uh, terms to us inshallah uh, in the next uh, forthcoming paragraphs so then the sheikh goes on to say he says al hijra to fi lugha tarku so he says the Sheikh says that Al Hijra, the word Al Hijra, in the linguistic sense, it means to leave something, to leave off something. Then the Sheikh says, "Am Al Hijra tu fi Shar, fahiya kama arrafah al Sheikh al Intiqal min balad al Kufr ila balad al Islam, wa hadi hi Al Hijra tu Sharaiya, wa Al Hijra tu Amal, wa Al Hijra tu Amalun Jalilu, karanahu Allah bil Jihad." So then the Sheikh says, but in the um, in the religious meaning or the Shari meaning in the Sharia, the meaning within the Sharia, then it is how the Sheikh says the original author has has defined it, and it is to move from a land of kufr, a land of disbelief, a non-Muslim land, to a Muslim land. And this, and the Sheikh says that this is the Hijra uh, uh, meant by the Sharia. This is the Hijra that is meant by the Sharia. And he says that Hijra here, then this emigration or immigration, it is a, a deed, and it's a tremendous deed, an action, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala connected it and compared it or connected it to uh, jihad. At the same level, like that, in in many uh, Quranic ayats verses. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, "لما هاجر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى المدينة جاء المهاجرون الذين كانوا في الحبشة إلى المدينة واجتمع المسلمون في المدينة والحمد لله وتكونت لل وتكونت للمسلمين دولة في المدينة من المهاجرين والأنصار ومن ومن يسلم يأتي إليهم." In the Dalika, Sharullah Bakiyat, in the Dalika, Sharullah Bakiyatu Sharai Deen, 
او شرع الله بقيه شرع الدين ففرض على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ففرض على نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم الصيام والزكاه في السنه الثانيه في السنه الثانيه في الهجره من الهجره وفرض عليه الحج في السنه في السنه التاسعه من الهجره على الصحيح وبذلك تكاملت اركان الاسلام اولها شهادتان واخرها الحج الى بيت الله الحرام So then in this paragraph, the shaykh, he, said, he says to us that when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Al-Madina, the Muhajirun uh, who were uh, in Habasha, the, the ones who made the, the first group of uh, migrants who, uh, who emigrated to uh, Habasha in Ethiopia, as you remember at the start of the lesson, then they also made their way to Al-Madinah. And so Al-Madinah came the central place and it was the first place of Islam, a first Islamic state where all the Muslims, whoever became Muslim from outside of Medina, they all made their journeys to stay with the Muslims in Al-Madinah. And this is what happened. So this is what the Sheikh mentions. And then the Sheikh also mentions, uh, and from those people, obviously the Muslims who became Muslim, they moved there. The uh, original... Uh, Muslim groups of Muslims who made Hijrah from Mecca to Habasha, they also came to Al-Madinah uh, and, uh, and also the original inhabitants, the, uh, the tribes al Aws and Khazraj who accepted Islam as well, who are known as the Al-Ansar. Yeah, and this is what made up the, the Muslims there. And, and then with all that, uh, Allah um, um, basically sent down all the all the remaining laws with regards to al-islam so for example um, uh, um, um, fasting was obligated uh, you know the month of ramadan fasting was obligated then zakat was obligated the obligatory charity in the second year of hijra and then hajj was also obligated upon the muslims uh, in the ninth year after hijra what the Sheikh mentioned, which is the most correct uh, opinion, yeah, with regards to that. And the Sheikh says, and with that, uh, the five, the pillars of Islam were completed. First, uh, which which is the first of it is the two shahadas, and the last of those pillars is making Hajj, making the pilgrimage to Allah's house, Bayt Allah al Haram. So then in the next paragraph, the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, وَالْحَاسِلُ مِنْ هَذَا أَنْ نَعْلَمَ أَنَّ التَّوْحِيدَ هُوَ الْمُهِمَّةِ الْأُولَى فِي الدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَأَنَّهُ يَبْدَعُ الدَّاعِيَةِ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَبْدَعَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالصِّيَامِ أو الزكاة أو الحج لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بقي عشر سنين يدعو إلى التوحيد وينهى عن الشرك ولم يؤمر بصلاة ولم يؤمر بزكاة ولا بحج ولا بصيام وإنما فردت عليه هذه الفرائض بعد أن تقرر التوحيد. So in this paragraph the Sheikh says the point being here and the point is that that we know that التوحيد it is the is the most important is the first priority in calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what the shaykh mentions is the ultimate and first priority in calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is that the caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he begins before everything else he begins with a tawheed before he begins calling people to the prayer, calling people to fasting, calling people to give their obligatory charity every year, and calling people to make the Hajj. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he remained, for 10 years he remained upon calling to Tawheed, as we know from the previous lessons that we studied together in the last two to three weeks. And he also spent those 10 years calling people to Tawheed, and warning people from committing shirk and falling into it. And he was not commanded with calling people to the prayer, nor was he commanded with calling people to zakah, nor hajj, nor uh, fasting. And 
indeed, you know, um, the remaining uh, obligations uh, were uh, made obligatory only after Tawheed was repeated and reiterated over that 10 year period, as we all know. So the Sheikh just strikes that point there, just for us to make sure that we remember the importance of a Tawheed and calling to it first. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say, For Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kana Ida. إذا بعث الدعاء يأمرهم أن يدعو الناس أول ما يدعون إلى التوحيد كما في حديث معاذ إنك تأتي قوما من أهل الكتاب فليكن أول فليكن أول ما تدعوهم إليه شهادة شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله فإن فإنهم أجابوا فإنهم أجابوا لذلك فأعلمهم أن الله افترض عليهم خمس سلوات إلى آخر الحديث. So in this paragraph, then the Sheikh he goes on to say that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, if he sent one of the callers to call people to Islam to a different land, for example, he would command them that they call the people. The first thing they call the people to is a tawheed, like in the hadith, the Sheikh quotes hadith of the hadith of Muad. Famous hadith of Muad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. As we read just in Arabic here, that uh, where the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Indeed, you're going to go, you're going to come to a people uh, from the people of the book, i.e., Jews and Christians. So the first thing that you should call them to is the two testifications. Yeah, a shahada an la ilaha illallah and anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And if they answer and accept that, then after that, Call them to uh, uh, then teach them that Allah has obligated upon them uh, five daily prayers to the end of the hadith. The Sheikh just quotes this excerpt just to make his point for us from before. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, فَدَلَّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ لَا يُؤْمَرْ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَلَا الزَّكَاةِ وَلَا بِالصِّيَامِ إِلَّا بَعْدَ تَحْكِيكَ تَوْهِيدِ وَوُجُودِ تَوْهِيدِ وَأَنَّ uh, من بدأ uh, بغير توحيد فإن فإن دعوته فاشلة ومن ومنهجه مخالف لمنهج الرسول كلهم عليه السلام عليه السلام. So in this final part of the paragraph, the Sheikh says that so therefore it's clearly demonstrated to us that that the main main thing that uh, a person should call others to first and foremost is a توحيد. And he also mentions that if somebody takes a different path that opposes the path of our messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in fact, the, the, the methodology of all of the prophets and messengers, which was to call people to la ilaha illallah first, at tawheed first, then they have taken a different path, and it's a path of failure. And the path of success is in following what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, and was commanded with, and likewise we are commanded with. So then, uh, just let me have a look. How long have we got to go? Okay, we, we just got about a page to go, I think. Inshallah. So bear with me. Let's finish this, inshallah. Another 10 minutes. So the Sheikh says, الرسل كلهم أول ما يبدأون به التوحيد وإصلاح الأقيدة وهذا منهج مهم معرفته للسالكين لأنه كثر اليوم من يأقر أو يأقر على هذا المنهج فيغير هذا المنهج ويختار منهجا لنفسه من عنده ومن عند غيره من الجهلة لا بد من الرجوع إلى منهج الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذه فائدة فائدة معرفة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وسيرته وجعل ذلك من الأصول الثلاثة تعرف كيف دعا الناس وما منهجه صلى الله عليه وسلم في دعوتهم حتى تسير عليه لأنه هو القد لأنه هو القدوة عليه الصلاة والسلام. So then in this paragraph, the Sheikh goes on to say, he says that all of the prophets, uh, all of the messengers, the first thing that they began with was calling people to at tawheed and as mentioned in the previous paragraph, that this is the way of the messengers. This is what Allah commanded them with, and with rectifying the people's beliefs. So starting with at tawheed 
and rectifying the people's beliefs. And this is the methodology, this is an important methodology, and it's important for those people who are treading the path of calling people to uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, ta'ala, then they need to know this. And for all of us anyway, we need to know this. We need to know the tawheed, because without it, we, we, we will end up most likely in the hellfire, because you'll probably end up doing shirk and won't know it. And then you, if you end up dying upon that, as in previous books, remember we studied that if we die upon that without asking for forgiveness, then that's a it's, a it's a situation that none of us want to be in, and that's the importance of knowledge, so we can act upon it. Uh, so then the Sheikh he says here that he says today nowadays that many people have they've spoiled the methodology, the correct methodology. They come with their own ways or ways of other people, and they leave the ways of the messengers. And as we know that the the ways of the messengers is to be followed, especially our messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is our role model, so we should take him as a role model. We don't need anybody else as a role model when we have the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a role model. There's nobody better than him. So this is what the Shaykh is making the point here. And so it's important for us to tread the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in how we call the people to al-Islam with the wisdom and knowledge. So then the Shaykh goes on to say in the next paragraph, Al Hijra to Karina to Jihad, he said, Billy La, Wahia Frida to Wahia Frida to Bakia, Wahia Frida to Bakia to Eru Mansuha, Yajibu Alakuli Muslim Yetaj, Il Al Hijrati and Yuhajir, Wala Yajuz the Muslim and Yukima, Fi Bilad il Kufri, Wahua La Yak Diru Allah in Hari Dine, Fayajibu Alehi and Yuhajira, Ila Bilad. إلى بلاد المسلمين فهي فريدة باقية نقولي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تنقطع الهجرة حتى تنقطع التوبة ولا تنقطع التوبة حتى تخرج الشمس من مغربها حتى تخرج الشمس وتخرج الشمس من مغربها So let's just hold on here for a second Soon see where this ayah is mentioned here Okay, we'll go through this long ayah as well uh, because uh, it comes part of the next paragraph. So then, uh, uh, looking at point uh, 64 here, the Sheikh says, Al-Hijrah, it is connected to Al-Jihad uh, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is uh, 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 an obligation. It's a remaining obligation. It hasn't been abrogated. Al-Hijrah, this immigration, it hasn't been abrogated. It remains. And it's obligatory upon every Muslim uh, that he makes his way to a Muslim land, emigrates. And it's not obligatory for a Muslim that he reside uh, in the uh, lands of disbelief, non-Muslim lands, and he is not able to uh, outwardly show his religion. That means, for example, let's just have a couple of examples. Let's say in England now, they made a law, you can't keep a beard. Or, uh, you know, you can't wear loose clothing, you have to wear tight clothing. Or anything that goes against showing us as ourselves as Muslims and being Muslims. If that starts happening, we can't, it's no longer uh, 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 applicable for us to stay in this land. And we need to make a way out of there and go to the land of the Muslims, ideally. Uh, this is what the Sheikh is saying here. Uh, and then the Sheikh says that this is a... Um, an obligation that it remains uh, and it remain to the uh, until the uh, until the establishment of the hour. This is what the Sheikh has mentioned here, uh, and and then he mentions the hadith. This hadith that we read in Arabic that uh, hijra will not. The Prophet Sallam said hijra will not be cut off up until uh, uh, toba is cut off, uh, and uh, and and toba will not be cut off up until. The sun rises from the west. Meaning, you know, when the sun rises from the west, we know that that's going to be the establishment of the hour. It's from the major signs of the day of judgment. So, as we know, uh, that's what the Sheikh is saying here. Then the Sheikh mentions a long ayah. He says the evidence for this. He says, 
قالوا في ما كنتم قالوا كنا مستضعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجروا فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا إلا المستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان لا يستطيعون حيلة ولا يهتدون سبيلا فأولئك صلى الله أن يعفو, يعفو عنهم وكان الله عفوا غفورا ومن يهاجر في سبيل الله يجد في الأرض مراغما كثيرا وسعا ومن يخرج من بيته مهاجرا إلى الله ورسوله ثم يدركه الموت فقد وقع عجله على الله وكان الله غفور رحيما so that's from Surah An-Nisa verse 97 to verse 100 and um, if we go to the translation of the meanings let's go there now inshallah Bear with me a second, brothers. Let's read the translation. Verily, as for those whom the angels take in death while they are wronging themselves as they stayed among the disbelievers, even though emigration was obligatory for them, they, angels, say to them, In what condition were you? They reply, We were weak and oppressed on earth. They, the angels, say, Was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to emigrate therein? Such men will find their abode in hell. What an evil destination. Except the weak ones among men, women and children who cannot devise a plan, nor are they able to direct their way. For these there is hope that Allah will forgive them and Allah is ever of pardoning, of forgiving. He who emigrates from his home in the cause of Allah will find on earth many dwelling places and plenty to live by. And whosoever leaves his home as an emigrant unto Allah and his messenger and death overtakes him, his reward is, is then surely incumbent upon Allah. And Allah is ever of forgiving, most merciful. So that's the meanings of those ayahs, yeah, in English. So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say, says, هَاتَانِ لَا يَتَانِ فِيهِمَ الْوَعِيدَ لَا مَنْ تَرَكَ الْهِجْرَةِ أَوْ مِنْ تَرْكِ الْهِجْرَةِ وَهُوَ يَقْضِرْ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْ مَأْوَاهُ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاعَةْ مَسِيرًا وَإِنْ كَانَ لَا يَقْرُجْ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ لَكِنْ هَذِي مِنْ نُصُوصِ الْوَعِيدِ إن كان ترك الهجرة فقد ترك واجبا أو ترك الهجرة فقد ترك ترك واجبا وكان عاصيا ولكن لا يخرج من الإسلام بترك الهجرة ولكن ليه وعيد شديد ثم بين الله بالآية بالآية التي بعدها الأذر الذي يسقط وجوب الهجرة قال تعالى إلا المستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والبلدان يعني الأطفال لا يستطيعون حيلة ما عندهم إمكانيات ولا يهتدون سبيلا أي ما يعرفون الطريق إلى البلد المدينة لأن الهجرة تحتاج إلى سفر وإلا فإن الإنسان يهلك يهلك خلال الهجرة إذا كان لا يعرف الطريقة فعذرهم في أمرين. So then the Sheikh just explains those three ayahs. He says the first two of the ayahs, as we read the meanings, explained uh, in the meanings anyway here uh, that uh, the punishment of those people who are able to. Uh, um, uh, migrate and they don't in that situation and 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 um, the sheikh says that it doesn't make them leave the fold of Islam but it's there's a they, you know they, they'd be severely punished if they come under those those uh, those rulings and um, also that it's a severe warning it's a severe warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those people capable of going and they should go and then they don't go and then the third ayah that we read from those three ayahs is uh, where Allah excuses some of the people depending on what they were. So whether they, the Sheikh says here, for example, if they were weak, you know, poor, they weren't able, um, you know, uh, they, maybe their children, for example, it's not possible for them to leave. They can't find a way. They don't have any monetary uh, ability. They can't, maybe bodily ability is not there. Uh, they, they don't know how to uh, 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 find their way to whichever land it is. If they struggle to direct themselves or find someone to direct them, then these are some of the excuses for those people. This is what the Sheikh mentions here. Then the Sheikh says, Al Awal, La Yastatiun Hila, Athani, Wala Yatadun Sabila, Hatta Lokana Indahum in Kanyat, Madia, Wala Kina La Yarifun, Tariq, and Ladi Yasrukunahu, Amal in San Ladi Indahu in Kanyat, or Yarifu Tariq, Pahada La Ogra. Okay, we've already mentioned this, so I'm not going to repeat that. 
um, okay. So then there's another ayah here which I don't see. The Sheikh's mentioning it. Just give me one second. It's in my other book. So um, let's, we're nearly finished now. Another two minutes we're done. Inshallah. Give me one second. Let me find it in the other book that I've got, the printed copy. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, this, so point 66. Uh, uh, the ayah is, let me find it. The ayah is from Surah al verse 56. And uh, it's for some reason I can't see it here. But um, it goes it goes as follows: Ya ibadi alladina amanu in ardi wasiatun fa iya ya faabudun. All al baghbi rahimahullah sabab nuzuri hadi la ya fil muslimin ladina bi makata wa lam yuhajiru na na dahum Allah bismi al iman. So um, first let's look at the meaning. All oh, my slaves who believe certainly spacious is my earth, therefore worship me alone. Then uh, Al-Baghawi, rahimahullah, the scholars of old, one of the scholars of old, uh, may Allah have mercy upon him, said that the reason for this ayah being revealed uh, was in the Muslims who uh, were in Mecca and they didn't emigrate. They, didn't, they were still in Mecca and they didn't emigrate. Allah called them uh, by the way of Iman and asked them and ordered them, sorry, to make the hijrah. This is the reason for this. So then the Sheikh says, Hadil ayah, من سورة الأنكبوت وفيها الأمر بالهجرة وأن أرض الله واسعة إذا كنت إذا كنت في بلد لا تتمكن من إظهار دينك فيها فهناك أرض الله واسعة انتقل منها لا تبقى في هذه البقعة السيئة بل أخرج منها إلى أرض الله الواسعة قد وسع الله الأرض سبحانه وتعالى ودليل على الهجرة من سنة قول تعالى لا تنقطع الهجرة حتى تنقطع توبة وَلَا تَنْقَتِعْ تَوْبَ حَتَّى تَطْلُوَ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِيهَا So then the Sheikh says in point 66 here, the Sheikh says that this ayah that we just read, he says that uh, it's from Surah Al-Ankabut, verse 56, as we've established as well. And the Sheikh says, in it is the fear of Hijrah, emigrating. And that the, that the, the earth, Allah's earth, this earth that Allah created, it is spacious. So if you were in a country in a land, in a place, in a country that you weren't able to uh, outwardly portray your religion in it, then upon you, then there is Allah's spacious earth, his earth that he created is spacious, so move from that place to another place and don't remain in this this uh, 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 evil land where you are yeah, this bad place Exit from it to another place. Allah's earth is spacious. And Allah made his earth spacious, made the earth spacious, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, and the evidence for this upon the hijrah is also from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu which we also mentioned the hadith before. Another hadith here, that the that hijrah will not be cut off until uh, um, forgiveness will be cut off. And forgiveness will not be cut off up until the sun rises from the west, as we mentioned previously in the last two paragraphs, the meaning of that, as you all know. Uh, then the Sheikh says, al Zahir had al Hadith, al Hijra intahad ba'da Fatti Makkah, wa thanna ba'da nas at Ta'arud bayna had al Hadith, wa bayna kawlihi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tanqati al Hijra, hata tanqati atoba, wa la tanqati atoba, hata tatlu al Shams, min Maghribiha, lakin. أهل العلم أجابوا عن هذا الحديث أن المراد أن المراد لا هجرة بعد الفتح أي من مكة لأنها صارت بالفتح دار إسلام يظنون أن الهجرة باقية من مكة باقية من مكة بعد الفتح فيريدون تحصيل ثواب الهجرة وأما الهجرة من بلاد الكفر فهي باقية إلى أن تقوم الساعة ودليل الآيات السابقة والحديث النبوي السابق هذا هو الجواب Okay, good. Alhamdulillah, we finished. So this last paragraph, the Sheikh, he mentions that, that another hadith. And some people get confused or they, they think that it's a, it's a, a contradiction, but it isn't. So the Sheikh says that he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet 
لا هجرة بعد الفت that there's no hijra after the conquest of مكة. However, the Sheikh says that some people uh, what happens is they see this and they see the other hadith that we've read and they think that there's a contradiction, but there isn't. And he says that the people of knowledge they explained this and they said that that was to do with uh, that there's a uh, that the hijra with regards to after the conquest that that last hijra going to Medina. It was specific to the people who were in Mecca going to Medina that after that there won't be any further hijra going to Medina. It was to do with that time. However, uh, it doesn't uh, contradict uh, the other hadith which shows us clearly that the hijra will be there up until the hour is established as the scholars mentioned here. And they said that the hijra it remains up until the establishment of the hour. So if we come to a certain situation where we need to move out of this place, then, you know, we will need to do. It's not as if, oh, uh, we just say, oh, there's this hadith over there that says there's no hijrah after the conquest of Makkah. So therefore, we don't need to go anywhere. That's not the case. As the scholars explained, uh, when they explained and looked at all the evidences, that this is specific, nothing to do. It's not general. Rather, the other hadith is general and it applies to until the end of time. And so, alhamdulillah, we uh, have concluded uh, and finished that uh, chapter. And inshallah, we will continue uh, next week. We'll keep it around about the same time now because the time is changing now. So we'll do it a little bit later, like 8.30, I think is a good time, UK time, 8.30 p.m. inshallah. Barakallah fikum. So we'll start with al uh, uh, We'll continue here. al istikrar fil Madina wa nuzul baqi sharai wa ikmal din. So the Sheikh's going to go through uh, staying in um, uh, uh, staying in Medina and making it a, a, pla- a place of residence for the Muslims and the rest of the Sharia law that was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet uh, that uh, wasn't done during Makkah. So we'll do this uh, next week, inshallah. Barakallah fiqh. And uh, I will see you brothers next week. Barakallah fiqh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu anna ilaha 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 ila